What's up, what's up guys, now you know me and welcome back to Chemically Bonded. Let us know from our last save point, which was June 22nd. Yeah. Besides the ambient sound of club activities, the corridor is silent enough for me to hear Kyoko moving around inside. Straight dust dances around in the air as I wait for her to call me inside. Rather than a call, a panicked yelp makes its way out from inside. Swiftly, my body turns and pushes the door open on instinct. Are you okay? As my minute adjusts to the light, Kyoko stands embraced by the evening sun in nothing but her Gary yeah, need a sense of that. The figure is surprisingly athletic. Now that I can see it, she must train a lot of out of school when she isn't doing science, that is. Her skin too, free from blemishes, has a mild shine as a light sweat glistens from the sunlight behind her. As for her choice of fashion, small blue bows stand out upon her rather plain white underwear. Wait, why am I just standing here staring? Kyoko too remains frozen, still clutching her hands to her hair with a bewildered look. One would soon change to a pang of embarrassment now that she realizes what I'm seeing. <laughs> what are you? Her face, now reddened, is just one of many sights laid out before me. It's a story. I guess she's okay after all, but I probably won't be after she's finished changing. Yeah, I knew that was coming. You can come back in. Embarrassment still spilling from her voice. Kyoko calls out from inside that. Maybe I'm best if I explain myself. Now adorned in casual clothing, Kyoko faces me with the same sense of embarrassment coating her face. Cheeks still rosy as she averts her gaze away from mine. Sorry about that. I heard you scream and I thought you'd hurt yourself. Thanks for the concern. It's my fault for not being careful. I almost fell over. Well, thankfully everything's okay. At least she is. The room is still a mess. Shards of broken glass lay before coating whatever chemical was originally inside. Kyoko's eyes quickly follow mine downward as we both stay still, staring at the scene. It looks like we'll be cleaning things together once again. It was my fault. I'll clean it. You should go home. Are you sure? I'd be happy to help. Kyoko, avoiding her gaze towards me, shakes her head and sighs softly. She must be about messing up her experiment. Picking up my bag, I leave her behind and I head towards the door. However, before leaving, there's one last thing I need to address. I will be coming tomorrow. Maybe the joke has lost its effect, but Kyoko seems to trust me enough now that she no longer needs to ask. For both of us, the science kind of become routine, even after a short amount of time. I'm enjoying it enough to stay here. Kyoko too seems to be enjoying it herself, and that in itself makes me happy. Departing with a wave, I make my way through the corridor set on my journey home. The sounds of club activities still strongly ambient through the ground provide subtle distractions as my feet meet the ground, casting shadows in the evening sunlight. I can't help but smile. I will be coming tomorrow. Me! <laughs> I'm gonna go a little long because I wasn't gonna be sure, I just didn't want to have the last video. <clears throat> A slight breeze meets my face as I idle beneath the looming evening sky, rustling my hair as I'm being strolling across the school ground. The scene before me is picturesque. It's a sight filled by the mild, unusually unnoted jitters of the ward. Leaves swaying in the wind, cars passing by the road ahead, and the long road lingering by the school gates. As she stands up, ever so oblivious to what I know, Perhaps at least as she waits for the one she loves. 
Maybe she's waiting for a few of her friends. Club members like to leave. Anyone who's in a club would have to wait around for to finish. However, truth be told, I know exactly who's going. I can't help but admit that I've been wanting to see her here too. No, she's not waiting around for the love of her life. She isn't waiting for friends either. This girl, heading towards the shop there, is a person I'm quite familiar with from the get-go. Naomi Sato. Faint ignorance about in a rather noticeable way. I turn my head back to ensure that she's not walking towards someone behind me. With an empty yard staring back at me, I know that it's not the case. I was waiting for you, idiot. Of course, I haven't missed her rude and condescending voice. What do you want? I thought I told you to stay away from Kyoko. Are all guys really this dumb? Luckily for me, she's keen on following up with her threat from before. That and insulting me all the while. Despite it, both of them are the same person on mine. Kyoko, have a, um, what? She thinks I am. Maybe I can talk some sense into it. To think that she's this fussed over Kyoko, there must be some reason behind that. What's your issue with Kyoko? Can't you just leave her alone? I can't help but raise my voice. Talking to call me would be harder than I thought, given my perceptions. I can't go as far as accusing her of bullying Kyoko, but defending what I now consider my friend is an actual thing I should do. A week ago, I wouldn't have imagined myself in a situation like this. The fear that I had then have long since fleeted. For once, I can convince myself to have a place here, within the science club, even without knowing where that place is in relation to the world around me. I can't just stand by and accept this. I... I don't have an issue with her. You wouldn't understand. I was no means to speak. I returned to an expression of melancholy, melancholy with a pensive one on, on my own. You think there's something going on between us? Don't you? Uh, uh, she's smaller than she looks. You wouldn't be wrong, but it's not what you think. Then again, I doubt if you can think. Hey, it's like she's trying to piss me off and quell my anger at the same time. Whether I can believe what she's saying, I don't know. I've surrendered my stance and I've not trusted her words that easily. <sighs> Clearly, you've gotten yourself involved into this now. You want to know the truth, right? By that, you're saying you're willing to tell me? Of course I am, dumbass! Otherwise, you'd just think I'm bullying Kyoko or something. What with her the insult? She doesn't make her case any more believable. So what is it? It's hard to explain. If you want to know, meet me here tomorrow after I've had some time to think. But you'd have to skip the science club for that. Wouldn't you? Standing there with a smug grin plastered across her face, I can't help but dislike her just a little more than I already do. Disregarding the insults and rudeness, <clears throat> she does seem to be acting somewhat sincerely. Given that if I object, she probably won't tell me again. Maybe her out wouldn't be a waste of my time. On the other hand, impending to her slightly like that doesn't make my situation any better. And in and in plenty who would just make me feel bad. Okay, so if I agree to this, that means I skip the side club and and I go to meet Naomi to hear the story. But if I object, I don't go to meet Naomi and I go to the side club with Kyoko. Now I did tell Kyoko that I would be coming by tomorrow. But if I accept agree this, I basically just lied to Kyoko, which not only would make my guy feel bad, but also he just lied to his like possibly only friend that he would be there and he doesn't show up. If he objects to this, he did not lie to Yoko and told the truth, but then won't get to hear the first story. So it's kind of like I don't want to upset her, but I want to hear the story. But I also, you know, you don't want to upset her. On one hand, you don't want to upset her, but on the other hand, you want to hear, you want to find out what's going on between them. So it's kind of, um, I guess it's more. How would you feel if this, if you were in the situation? Would you want to, you know, lie to your possibly only friend and upset her, 
Or would you rather, um, basically, would you rather, you know, mind her and upset her just get the first story, but, or would you rather, you know, rather be truthful to your only friend, make her happy, and possibly never hear the first story? It's kind of like, it's kind of how you have to think about it. The thing is, I'm not sure what to do, and I don't think I can save after I, at this moment, so it's kind of hard to choose what I want, but considering what I made last time, remember the other thing about it, something came up, when he got home, that he couldn't, maybe also, like, maybe something happened when he, when he got home that he couldn't, that he had to go home right after. And I think he went out the window and would see me talk to Naomi if I agree to this. But, I am going to, in this case, I'm going to agree to meet Naomi after school in some science club. We'll see what how this plays out, because I swear I showed a duck last time, so I have no idea what. So this is means that agreeing this is going go to be new to me. Looking on, looking on at me, away my spot, now I'm going to make contact with mine. The stone look tells me that she doesn't like to give me a chance to again. There must be something she wants to say. Leaving your college is just a fact I have to put up with if I want to answer to the thoughts I have within me. I'm sure she understands why I come with a reasonable excuse. Passing on when you see a story from Naomi's perspective isn't something that I like to do, given that she's willing to talk. Finding out what her issues with Kyoko are is my priority, even if I don't really like her attitude. Fine. If it's not what I think, you must have had a reason to stop me like this. I'm glad you understand. From stoneness to sincerity, Naomi's expression changes to a more welcome one. It's something which looks and with such trustworthy at least. Somebody needs to. Anyway, I'll be waiting here again tomorrow. I'll be skipping training too, so don't feel too bad. Since she's the team captain, I don't think anyone can berate her for skipping. I don't want you to back out on this. The qualms of leaving Kyoko behind still linger in my mind. But I guess I had made my choice. The issue of Naomi's involvement with her has been bugging me the last few days. To have her openly decide to tell me, even after strangling me in the corner, means that it's been bugging her too. The thoughts of her bullying Kyoko seem to be less founded in reflecting on her actions. Even if it were the case, she wouldn't give me second thought. Perhaps she'd explain herself after all. But it could just be that I'm in over my head. I should have realized it long ago. Anyway. I'll be going now. I'm tired of seeing you, is what I expected to say. But alas, my wind plus nothing but a small yet significant wave. The evening sky glows above us as the sun begins to fall. A canopy above us, the mist, as the mild spring air blows into my face. Whether my decision was right, I'll have to find it tomorrow, but the guilt is still there. Hey, what are you still doing here? A faint yet cheerful voice makes itself to stay behind me as we're still in the schoolyard. I must have been standing for a while. Trying to face her, Kyoko's usual choppy expression shines in the sunlight as wind rustles her silky flowing hair. I, I just felt a bit queasy and wanted a short rest. Are you okay? It's been about 15 minutes. I should be fine. I need my son to smile. She too calls her lips into one of reassurance. Don't overdo yourself. You have to make it in tomorrow. Right? That's right. The war has made me reflect on my choices, which still fill me with doubt. Standing here with a bright smile across her face, Kyoko is oblivious to my involvement in the situation around her. Sooner or later, the truth of the matter we made manifest as our friendship continues. It's hard not to believe that Kyoko too must be feeling inside her, who wish Naomi is too apparent to ignore. My role in the air is clear, but I can't help feel as if I'm now a part of it. It's getting pretty late. She's not wrong, but in order to the time is easier to think than directly as we should go. 
For a quarter of an hour, I've just been standing here facing the issue surrounding the two of us. What are you doing just standing there? Come on! Here goes my trot along ahead, drawing my inner monologue. I can't leave a happy talk as well as not waiting. I'm coming, jeez. Trailing on behind her, we reach the main gates together, and thus facing the time for departures, the day itself has been enjoyable in more ways than one. I'll see you tomorrow, Kyoko. Goodbye. Have a great evening. I'm not planning to do much, but I won't let them fall in deaf ears. We'll still be seeing each other in class. When the mutual set of smiling and parting ways, we head home beneath the evening sunlight in opposite directions. I don't know if they I'll have to think about it all later. I don't have an issue with her, Naomi. And that's where we end in this one. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to go down there, click that like button, let me know you're enjoying the content, and also, help support the channel. And, if you haven't done so already, Click that subscribe button, join the fun over there, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.